morning, and welcome to Cayman Islands Baptist Church in our Sunday AM worship service. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Our service will be starting shortly, but here are some great e-events you can join this week. Welcome to our community of love. Church. My name is Devontis Chambers and I am a student at Bethel University. I'm going on to my senior year now thanks to all the support and prayer prayers that you've been giving me over the years. Um, I just want to encourage you all to share the gospel. Uh, right now we're all tied up in home. We all are occupied with a lot of things but we're all on social media as well. We're all on Instagram. We're all doing different things. Um, one thing that's good about social media is that we can broadcast messages across the world. So with one click of a button you can just share this message. I wanna encourage you guys to share this message so that we can let everybody know that they're loved, uh, they're being prayed for, and that God is working in this time. Um, also, if you need help or anyone you know who needs help during this time, feel free to contact the church through the church email or you can call the church at 922-6839, 922-6839. Um, and also, we have this new website that allows you to give online um so you can check that out to at cibaptist.ky thank you guys so much let's worship let's have a great sunday um and let's say a quick prayer dear god thank you so much for all that you've done uh, all that you're doing in this time um father we don't know what's going on but we trust that you'll see us through the end of this father i pray that you continue to bless us continue to heal us father continue to keep us safe uh, give us wisdom and guidance so we can know how to navigate our ways through this um, and help us to just know that we are we are being taken care of, Father, that you have, have, have done nothing but goodness for us, Father. And I just pray that you remind us constantly, daily, that we are your children, Father, and that we will be okay at the end of this. I pray that you allow our hearts to open up to this message um, and that you will just speak to us individually. Let us hear what we need to hear, Father and uh, to just share this message wherever we go. I pray these words in your wonderful name, amen.
days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, so we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call to lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and not of sight till salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and not of science till salvation comes. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and not of science till salvation There's no God like Jehovah, 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 there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and not a sign till salvation comes. In Oh, 
I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing Standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I shall not fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, I'm standing on the promises of God. Hello everyone. I want to add my welcome to you who join us here in worship at the Cayman Islands Baptist Church. Uh, in the midst of this global pandemic, we are a people still with our eyes on the Lord. Our, our hearts are worshiping Him. We're trusting Him to bring us through this time of the crisis. And we come to this time of prayer in our service. We, we traditionally have this moment when we take some time just to personally as well as corporately come together to pray. But on this week and in, during this kind of time of crisis, how important it is for us to pray. I said this week in something I wrote, just the simple words, we need to pray. And we are. Yes, in a few moments. But I want to call you here in these opening moments uh, of this prayer time to a time of prayer across these islands. We're calling it Pray Came In, 72 hours of prayer and fasting. 
It will begin this Thursday. It's April the 30th at 6 o'clock p.m. Now, it will be in a virtual platform. Uh, you will be able to go on YouTube. In fact, as I'm talking, you can see some of the uh, information you'll need for YouTube or Facebook. And we'll put that out this week for you also in some uh, printed materials. But as we come together to pray, pastors and church leaders will be leading us in a virtual prayer room for 72 hours. Yes, we're calling on people to pray, to fast, to seek the Lord for his healing. You know, I, I take that, that call as being very biblical. And in fact, I wanna to read to you a key verse for us. It has long been a key verse for prayer. But in this time, listen to the word of the Lord. It's Second Chronicles chapter seven. Now we often go right to 14, but listen to verse 13. When I shut up the heavens so there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. As we come together this week for those 72 hours of pray, again, it's pray, amen. Uh, you can join us on YouTube. You can come in and out. Uh, you, you won't be able to stay up 72 hours for us, but throughout that 72 hour period, come into the prayer room and Join us as we pray, and let's seek the Lord for his healing of our land. Let, let's do what the scripture says. Let's humble ourselves and pray. Yes, seeking the face of God, which is the, the will or the pleasure of God, turning from our sins and then claiming the promise. He said, if we'll do that, if we'll pray, if we'll humbly pray. He said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive your sin, and I will heal your land. I hope you can join us this week, but even now we pray. I'm gonna invite you here, there in your own homes, in the living room, uh, or maybe around your breakfast table with your family. I want us to take this time to pray. Yes, we are praying even now for God to heal our land, to heal our world, uh, not just from the pandemic, but that God would bring his peace and his grace and his mercy, that the good news of Jesus Christ would be proclaimed to world, that we might find our hope in him and everyone our hope is in Jesus Christ. So let's pray for that. Let's pray for those we know who may be uh, ill with the COVID-19 families that have been affected. We pray for our, our, our community, our, our economy, and all the ways that we've been affected. Let's pray for God to heal. But also in this time of prayer, you have matters on your own heart, personal matters with your family, uh, concerns you have for uh, someone that you are praying and interceding for that you can pray even now in this service. So just present, as the scripture says, your petitions to the Lord. Let's pray, everyone. Pray with me now. So we begin this prayer. Uh, I'm going to give you moments to pray with the quiet music in the background. But even now, begin your prayer just with some word of worship to the Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, Jesus taught us to pray. And then pray.
Thank you, our Lord God. Thank you, Father, that you have heard our prayers this morning. Every heart that lifted a request to you, Father, you heard that request. And God, I believe in keeping with your will, you are responding to answer these many prayers. We do pray for the healing of our land. We pray for your help in this time of crisis. We pray that your hope would permeate our hearts today and that the good news of Jesus would inspire us and equip us to go out from this time of worship and into our world, even if we're somewhat sheltered in, that God from our, uh, our homes, from our, uh, our smart devices, and when we get opportunity, when we can physically bow, give us the privilege, Lord, to share the hope we found in Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray, amen. God bless you everyone as we continue now in worship. Through the eyes of men it seems there's so much we have lost As we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked and one by one the enemy has whispered lies and led them off as slaves. Whoa. But we know that you are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. Mercy, God of unrelenting love, rescue every daughter, bring us back the wayward son, and by your spirit breathe upon them, show the world that you alone can save, you alone can save, as we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. church family. It's good to be with you on this Sunday morning. We've already enjoyed some wonderful worship music together and a uh, time of prayer. And so we are gathered together here on the Lord's Day. Even though we can't necessarily gather uh, physically, we are gathered virtually. And so I'm glad that you all are tuned in today. 
And we want to pick up as we were last week in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Today we will cover verse number 13 of chapter number 4 all the way down through chapter 5 verse number 11. And I want to bring you an encouraging sermon today entitled The Brightest Hope for the Darkest Hour. The Brightest Hope for the darkest hour. This passage of scripture is supremely applicable to our condition and where we are right now uh, in life as we know it. Certainly uh, the last few months have just kind of turned our whole world upside down. It seems as if the world is in chaos. There have been many who have died from the COVID-19 virus. Uh, There are people who are afraid, fearful, anxious, Uh, We have folks who have lost work and are nervous, uh, others who are nervous that that may be coming down the line for them. Even in this very week, not only with the pandemic going on around the world, but with this news coming out of Canada of those 16 people who were shot and killed, uh, the whole world is just grieving and there is a degree of uncertainty. And so we might say that the world is very dark in these hours. And so I want to give you a message of encouragement from the Word of God today. And really, we want to talk about the brightest hope, the joy, the brightest hope for the darkest hour. Christianity offers that brightest hope for the darkest of all hours. And so we find ourselves in a text today that really deals with this specifically. So I want to invite you to take your Bible, turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, and pick up with me, if you would, in verse number 13. Uh, Let me point out a couple of things to you first before I read, just so you'll know that these two sections are connected. Notice, first of all, in chapter number 4, verse number 18, the apostle ends this section by saying, Therefore, encourage one another with these words. If you drop down to chapter 5 and look at verse number 11, notice that the apostle Paul ends this section with very close to identical language. He says, Therefore, encourage one one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. So when it comes to understanding these two sections together, we don't want to take them apart. We really want to take them as one whole and see what the Apostle Paul is really dealing with and and helping us to understand in our Christian life. So let me read for you first of all. I'll read the verses and then come back and make some uh, points from here. Verse number 13 down through verse number 18 of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. The apostle says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed or ignorant about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven, notice, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will ever be with the Lord forevermore. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This passage is written to us to encourage believers in the church who are going through dark days and dark hours. Let me point out a few things here in the text. First of all, we might have uh, the mistake here to just run toward end time things here or make a decision as a pre-tribulation rapture, post-tribulation rapture, and kind of get all caught up in the end times. But what I want you to see today is that the Apostle Paul is writing to believers in this section who are most concerned about their brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles who were believers in Jesus Christ but have passed away. They have died. 
And they're wondering about their fate and their future and will they ever be reunited and, and what happens to people who die in Jesus Christ. And we're right here in the world that we live in. We have people that have uh, died and we look around the world. We see people dying all over and this disease is, is racking the world with death and fear and sickness. And so for believers, we come to a text like this at a time like this, and we find comfort because even when we are faced with the darkest hour of death of those who we love, we are reminded that because Jesus rose from the grave, so we will rise from the grave because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave through the resurrection. So our brothers and sisters in the Lord who pass on before us, they too will have that that same victory, and we will see them again in the Lord. Notice back at the text. Let me point out a few things to you. Well, do you see in verse number 13 where he says, those who sleep in death, uh, that's kind of a New Testament way of saying for believers, death is not so much an eternal thing as it is a sleeping. It is a, it is a temporal thing until God resurrects them again. But notice the repetition of this, those that sleep in death. And then look with me at the end of verse number 14, those who have fallen asleep in him. Notice at the end of verse number 15, those who have fallen asleep. And then notice again at the end of verse number 16, and the dead in Christ will rise first. You know, I would say to you, that when we think about the dark hours of death, and all of us have had um, family members or friends or somebody who we've walked with down that path, and it can be very dark, I want to say that the good hope that we have is that those who sleep or die in Christ, those who die with faith in Jesus Christ, shall be raised again on the last day when Jesus comes. You know, I've uh, done a number of funerals in my ministry, and there is a stark contrast between doing a funeral for a believer and doing a funeral for uh, an unbeliever. You know, I, I remember a dear uh, brother in our church uh, before in the past when he passed away, uh, somebody said at the service that he kind of preached his own sermon with his life. And though the family did have tears, though they were sad, there was, uh, uh, you know, this, this uh, uh, missing of their loved one, there was a hope. In the resurrection, there was a hope. There wasn't hopelessness, but there was a hope that they will see their brother again. And because Christ had saved them, that he was alive and well and in heaven, waiting to be reunited with them one day in the future. I did a funeral one time for a young man who took his own life. And I remember standing graveside as his mother uh, threw herself over the casket and wept bitterly again and again. They had to take her away from the casket, and the young man was not a believer in Jesus Christ. Now, I don't stand in judgment of anybody in the world, but by his own profession and his own words, he did not believe in Jesus. And the tenor and the attitude and the tone of that entire funeral was one of hopelessness. Uh, one of pain and sorrow. If you look back down at the text, you can see that the Apostle Paul is encouraging all of us at this time. Look at what he says in verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about those brothers and sisters who die in Christ, who sleep in death. And why doesn't he want you to be that way? So that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. There is a difference between the Christianity that we have and the lost world around us when it comes to death, when it comes to disease, when it comes to pain and suffering and all that is going on in our world. We do not sorrow as those that have no hope for we are believers in Jesus Christ. And that, brothers and sisters, gives us hope to live today for him. Look at verse number 14. For we believe. You'll notice that comes up again later in the verse. So we believe. But he says, for we believe. And here's the gospel. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. 
And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. You see, because we believe the gospel, that Jesus died according to the scriptures, was buried according to the scriptures, and rose again on the third day so that every man, woman, boy, and girl in the world who would put their faith and trust in Jesus' life could have their sins washed away and be given a new heart and a new life and a new resurrection. Because of the gospel, we have hope. And notice what he says here, because we believe the gospel that Jesus died and rose again, he says, we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep. I want to say to you today, if you have a dear loved one who has passed away, even in the last week, I have spoken with people in our church who have lost loved ones, whether it be a family member or a close friend. We have those who are uh, near death because of disease. I, I want to say to you that we have a hope to stand on, and his name is Jesus Christ. He died and he rose again. And because he made that way, we believe that when God comes again through Jesus Christ, that all of our brothers and sisters that have passed on into the next life, that Jesus will bring them again and resurrect them together with us to be united with him in his kingdom forever. That is a cause for joy. That is a reason for you to rejoice right in your own living room, right wherever you're watching this today. Just rejoice. Just say, hallelujah, Jesus has won the day. He has rose from the grave and we have eternal life. Our brothers and sisters that have passed through the darkest valley, the darkest night, the darkest times, they have the brightest hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then look at what he says in verse number 15 according to the Lord's word. That is, according to the word of God, the Bible. That's our bedrock. That's what we stand upon. We tell you that we who are alive, who are left unto the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord in this verse is picked up again in chapter number five and verse number one. We'll get there again. So he says here, those of us who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. But that is that our brothers and sisters that have passed on into heaven right now, uh, it, it's kind of like they are, they're first in line and we're next, all right? And we're not gonna precede them. No, they're, they're not marginalized. They're not pushed to the side. They're not forgotten about. And, you know, sometimes in our life, uh, my time will pass on and, and say, well, I forget this memory or uh, this person is slipping from my mind. I want you to know that no believer that ever passes into the next world ever slips the mind of God. He loves them. He takes care of them. He watches over them. And when they come back, brothers and sisters, I will tell you this. Uh, all of us that are alive and remain, we don't go before. It's not like we get first dibs. No, he puts them back into their bodies. He resurrects them with a new life. And together we go out to meet the Lord. Notice what he says here, verse number 16. This is a powerful section. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. And then notice the three withs in your passage. With a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. When Jesus comes back again, he will come back in power, in glory, in victory. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords who is reigning. You know, you've heard it said that when Jesus came the first time, he came as the lamb. When he comes the second time, he will come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. You have heard it said that when Jesus came the first time, he came as the babe in the manger. When he comes the second time. He will come as the king upon the throne and let it rejoice your heart. Let it give you victory and confidence to live this week for Jesus because our eyes are looking to the day when Jesus will come again. And when he comes, he'll come with a loud command of victory. He will come with the voice of the archangel that will announce that our king is present in this world. And he will come with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then notice verse number 17. 
after that, we who are alive and remain uh, are caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, we, we don't need to fight and argue and bicker about this passage. The point that we can all agree on is that it is the brightest hope for the darkest hour when we think about death, that one day Jesus will descend to the clouds in the air. He will bring all of our brothers and sisters that have died in Christ with him. We will be raised together, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We will instantaneously be united with our brothers and sisters, and we will be united in the presence of Jesus Christ. And verse number 18 is the capstone to this wonderful section. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So let me back up for just a moment and say to you today, whatever's going on in your heart, whatever fear and anxiety and frustration, maybe there's some sadness. I know for some of our congregation, you may have a loved one who is on the borderline of death in these hours. I say to you, go ahead and weep, go ahead and cry, but don't sorrow as those that have no hope. Because if that person is a believer in Jesus Christ, we have the greatest hope, the hope of all hopes, that because Jesus died and was buried and rose again, so our loved ones will rise again and we will too, to forever be with the Lord. You notice when he says he'll descend to the clouds or he'll come down to the clouds in the air, you notice that is a direct reference back to Acts chapter number one, uh, where the Bible tells us that Jesus ascended in the clouds and that all of the disciples there gazing into heaven and the angel said, why stand you here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus shall so come again in like manner as you have seen him go. He rose directly into heaven as the king of kings. He will descend send back to earth as the king of kings. He will establish his rule and reign upon this earth, and all of those that are in Christ will rule and reign with him. I hope that in your heart, even if you can't get it out of your mouth, will you rejoice and, and, and declare and shout a hallelujah that Jesus is our victory, and let us be encouraged today that even when we walk through the darkest valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for he is with us. Then let me take your attention momentarily to chapter number five. I'll, uh, I'll try and read these verses here and then make some comments. Notice chapter five, verse one through 11. The author says, now brothers and sisters, about times and dates, right, of, of the coming of the Lord, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape, right? For the unbelievers, this will be a tough, hard situation. But look at verse number four. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that, there it is again, this day should surprise you like a thief. You are the children of the light and the children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober. Then notice this, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. You'll notice that uh, quickly here, verse number 10 and 11 look a whole like a whole lot like uh, chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, right? And those who are asleep and then repetition of the gospel and then this uh, comforting and encouraging. That's there to show you that this is an entire section going together. Uh, verse 13 through 17 of chapter 4 is not speaking about something different than chapter 5 through ch verse number 11, 1 through 11. It's talking about the one 
one coming of Jesus Christ when he comes back to gather his believers together to rule the world, to establish justice. Those that are righteous will reign. Those that are unrighteous that have never come to faith in Christ will perish forever. But we find ourselves now in verse number 1 through 11 of this chapter where the Apostle Paul is saying, listen, in the darkest hour, I want to give you the brightest hope. If the preceding verses that we discussed talked about those that die in Christ Jesus and how there's hope and restoration and resurrection for them, so these verses deal with those of us who are left to the coming of the Lord. And so there may be some of us today, and you know, I don't know when the Lord's coming back, but I do know that um, the Bible says that the times will wax worse and worse, and I do know that we are closer today than we were yesterday to the Lord's coming. And I do know that the world that we live in can be very scary, can be very nerve-wracking. I know that there can be all kinds of fears that are going on, and this may be a dark time in your life. You you might be struggling with depression, dear one. You might be struggling with isolation. I want you to know that in the darkest of hours is the brightest of hopes that we can live not only in the kingdom to come with Jesus, but we can live in the darkness of, darkness of this hour with Jesus. First of all, notice for the uh, first few verses here that there is a recompense for those who are not ready for the day of the Lord. He says here, now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will suddenly come as labor pains upon a woman, and they will not escape. I say to all of us today, under the sound of my voice, let us be the kind of believers who are ready and looking and longing for the coming of Jesus. Let us not be uh, like uh, those uh, ladies who uh, didn't, in the Gospels, they didn't have their candles ready and they had to go back to town and then here comes the bridegroom and they were shut out. Let us be the kind of people who are ready and longing and looking for the coming of Jesus Christ and living our life not in darkness but in the light of day. Why? Because those who are not ready will not escape destruction. I say to you today, if you're listening, member of our church or visitor or maybe first time jumping on here, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Now is the moment of grace. Don't wait another minute. Give your life to Jesus right now. He could come at any moment. There's nothing keeping Jesus from coming again. He could come right now. And if you're not ready, you'll suffer that kind of destruction and there won't be any escape. So I plead with you, fall upon Jesus, give your life to Jesus. And now look with me, if you would, at verse number four. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that that day should surprise you. You're the children of the light, children of the day. Notice the uh, notice the, the contrasting here that's going on. We're not people of the night. We are people of the day. We are not people who are sleeping in lethargy, but we are people who are awake. And so I say to you as a believer, as the day of the Lord approaches, let us be the kind of people who are awake. Don't fall asleep in the garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. Don't fall asleep. Don't let the, uh, the, the Spirit be willing, but the flesh be weak. Give every moment of your life to be ready for Jesus to come again, and you'll walk in the brightness of hope. And now look with me at verse number eight. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith, love, and hope. Faith, love, and hope. Guard your hearts and your minds and your souls and your bodies with faith, love, and and hope. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Put your faith in the word of the living God. Put your faith in God himself. Live every day believing in him. Faith, love, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Reach out. Love those that are around you. Live as a child of the light. Live as a child of the day, and love people, and that great hope will spread to those that are in darkness faith, hope, and love. Now lastly, he says the hope. The hope there is the hope of the coming of Jesus Christ. There will come a day when Jesus will come again and he'll restore and make all things right. So live in the light of the glory of God now and you'll be ready when he comes. Notice lastly, he says here in verse number 11, 
Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Notice verse 11 mirrors verse number 18 of chapter number four, but there's an addition. He says, therefore, encourage one another. So I'm trying to encourage you today. I'm trying to lift you up and build you up. I, I want to build you up, not just in self-esteem, but build you up in Jesus Christ that you'll love him and walk with him. And those of you that are downtrodden and in darkness, I pray that the inbreaking of the brightness of the glory of God would move into your life right now, that God would cause his face to shine in your life, in your family's life, that you'd be picked up and encouraged as a brother or sister in Christ. Please, Lord Jesus, bring encouragement and grace and mercy and peace to every brother or sister that is going through the darkest of times, whether through a loved one who's passing away or whether through living through this pandemic and all of the chaos that is around us. May God give us the bright hope and the brightness and the kindness of Jesus Christ. Not only do we want to be encouraged, but look what it says, therefore encourage one another and build each other up. You know, Jude says, building each other up on your most holy faith. Take time to build your children up. Take time to build your spouse up. Take time to build your mom and dad up. Take time to build your friends up. Take time to build church members up. Take time to build those in your community up. Give a call, give a text, give a WhatsApp, give an email, give yourself to building up those that are around you, that we may rise up together, even in this pandemic, even in the world that is around us. May we be the church that is set uh, as a city on a hill, brightly shining the light so that all the world may see that Jesus Christ is the answer. I say to you today, my friend, trust Jesus be encouraged. The brightest hope for the darkest hour is found not in something, but in someone, in Jesus Christ. I encourage you today that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right where you are right now, bow your head and close your eyes and simply talk to the Lord Confess that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus died and rose again. And commit your life to following him. Trust what Jesus has done. If you're a believer listening, I say to you right now, the greatest hope, the brightest hope for the darkest hour is Jesus Christ. One day he will bring all of those who have believed and gone on before. They will come back. They will be resurrected. We will forever be united together. Live as children of light with faith, love, and hope. Let faith, love, and hope ring out in your hearts, minds, souls, and bodies this week. Encourage one another. Build each other up until the coming of the Lord. One day, the skyline will open up. There will be a loud command. There will be the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And all of our sins will be pushed aside. And all of Christ's righteousness will be established in his reign upon the earth. Until that good, glad, wonderful day, may Christ bring the light of the glory of God into our hearts right now as we walk through the darkest of times together. I love you. May God bless you and keep you. Let me pray for you. My Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for your blessing upon your people. I pray for unbelievers to call upon you in faith and be redeemed. I pray for every believer under the sound of my voice to draw courage and strength and to be built up in Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would be the brightest hope in the darkest valley of our own lives and then you would shine through us to be the brightest hope in the darkest valley of others around us and in our community and around the world. We love you. We bless your holy name. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Take 
Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee, swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee, filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose every power as thou shalt choose take my will and make it thine it shall be no longer mine take my heart, it is thy own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for thee. In the light of his glory